Are you experiencing your divine masculine not wanting to communicate with you or connect with you or even be in a relationship with you? Stay tuned. I'm going to give you five reasons why this is happening. And at the end, I'm going to show you and tell you how to heal it. Hi, guys. I am Kanisha. I am a certified Ascension coach with Twin Flames Universe. And this video is inspired by a blog that Twin Flames Universe did on the five reasons why the divine masculine is putting up and setting up boundaries with you. And this may look like they are running, but in truth, there is no runner with Twin Flames. You both are just running from love. And so your divine masculine is mirroring to you and showing you where you are running from love and where you're trying to put all of your love onto him instead of yourself. Now, I am totally guilty of this. I have healed it within my union, and so I am here to help you do the same. Know that you are completely supported, and if you desire more support, please check out TwinFlamesUniverse.com. You will also find amazing Ascension coaches there who have worked through this as well and are ready to help you move right through it. So let's get started on the first reason on why your divine masculine is setting a boundary with you and it may look like he's running. The first one is going to be codependency. Now, you cannot have a codependent relationship with your twin flame. It is very easy to do that with soulmates, but your twin flame is going to mirror back to you that pattern so that you can choose to align with love in that space and depend on source, love, God, depend on yourself instead of depending on them. Now, this is also him saying to you, I am not your source of love. You are your source of love. And so when you don't put them as your source, it allows you to have a healthy relationship with them because you're not looking and seeking to them to fill up your cup or to validate you or to give you the recognition that you desire. Those are all things that you have to do within yourself. And as soon as you do that, your twin flame mirrors it back to you. Most of the time, it's very instantly. That's the beauty of a twin flame is when you heal the core of something, they will mirror that instantly back to you. There's no waiting. There's no an awakened twin and I'm just waiting for him to do his healing because I've done my healing. No, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. You and your twin are equally awakened. And he's mirroring to you where you're trying to depend on him for everything or your love really, instead of just giving it to yourself. And so as you heal that codependency, it's also that energy of you saying like, hey, you're my person, so you should do this for me, or you should give this to me. And he says, no, I am your equal. I am you. <laughs> so if I am you, you should give that to you. And then you'll see the mirror give it back to you. I really love this analogy that you can't wait for the mirror to smile at you. You have to smile first and then the mirror smiles at you too. And so when you think of it that way, you'll recognize, oh, my twin flame can't actually give to me here if I'm not giving to myself here. And that is what's going to create a healthy balance within the dynamic of your twin flame union. And you'll find that he'll want to be more around you because you're not depending on him. So it won't feel like he's running or putting a boundary here. He'll actually desire to connect with you, to be in your space, to feel your energy in that way and just be with you. So releasing codependent energies. One of the things I love to say is I release my relationship with codependency. And that is one of my favorite affirmations. All right. Number two reason why your divine masculine is setting a boundary and it may feel and look like he's running from you. And that is going to be because he feels not respected by you. Now, that's something I've also had to move through too. And I was like, excuse me, how am I not respecting you? But it was because he didn't feel heard. He didn't feel that what he was saying to me was registering because in my heart, I felt he loves me. I know he loves me. This is just a block. But because I was trying to fix it and change it on the outside, instead of going within and healing it, he had to put a boundary there. And it almost felt like he was distancing himself from me, which he was. He was energetically saying, you keep disrespecting me in this space. I need to respect myself here. That is also what he's telling you, is that somewhere you're not respecting yourself. So when I looked at this inwardly, it was I was not holding myself to my own high standards. I was not honoring my core values. I was literally wanting this relationship so bad that I was going to sacrifice my values and my standards. And he's telling me, no, that's so unattractive to your twin flame. They will not allow you to do that by entertaining that. It's going to feel really bad to them. And essentially, it's going to feel really bad to you. 
And so it's going to be really important that you respect what your divine masculine is communicating to you. It doesn't mean that you have to honor it as your truth, but you do have to respect that that is his experience. And in return, you have to look at maybe where you're not respecting yourself. If he doesn't feel respected, that is also his upset. He'll move through that. But it's important that you're feeling through your feelings around it and what comes up. And that allows him space to do the same. So it's really important that you are respecting your divine masculine, but that you're also respecting yourself. That is one of the eight keys of a solid foundation to harmonious twin flame union is respect. So you want to make sure that you are honoring that. Okay. Step three, you are n not loving yourself. Essentially, <laughs> you are not filling up your own cup. You are not allowing yourself to be the best version of yourself because maybe you are putting so much focus on what's not happening in re the relationship, what was said, what the circumstances, instead of just pouring into yourself and really making a choice every day to live your best authentic life, to take care of yourself physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, to really become stable in your life, really become secure in your life, becoming that high value woman that you know you can be and becoming that version of yourself that is living your life purpose. And when you live your life purpose, you naturally attract your twin flame because you're supposed to do it with them. And so ask yourself, am I showing up daily as if I already had my harmonious union? If it's not, then you have a little bit of work to do because you believe that you're going to become that person once you have your twin flame. No, as you're becoming that person, you are naturally attracting your twin flame because you're becoming your most authentic self. You are seeing yourself clearly, then your twin flame can see you clearly. So it's going to be important that you are pouring into yourself daily. First thing when you wake up in the morning, I recommend doing the mirror exercise feeling your feelings, giving yourself that love that you need, then going on with your rest of your day. Checking in on yourself is really important. You know how you want your divine masculine to text you and check in on you and just see how you're doing? Are you doing that with yourself, sis? I hope you are, <laughs> because if you are, you'll start to see that your divine masculine will do that too. And I have found that when I am really loving myself, I am not seeking love outside of myself. There is no part of me that needs my man to tell me he loves me or shows me that he loves me because I already feel loved. And as I already feel loved and overflow in my cup, then my man can easily meet me in that space of love. And that's the truth. You can only meet your twin flame in a place of peace and love, not in a place of neediness and codependency. Okay, <laughs> number five, or excuse me, number four, guys, why your twin flame in your divine masculine is setting a boundary with you and it may look like he's running. And that is because you are not putting yourself first. This kind of wraps everything in. But if you are going to school or you have a career and a job or you have children and you seem to always put the needs of others first, I am a first oldest child. <laughs> so I've always put everyone first. This has been a really big core upset that I've had to continue to just chip away and heal at and really be compassionate with myself of learning how to truly put myself first, how to ask for support and help, how to really allow that support and help in instead of trying to do it all by myself. And that meant that I had to put myself first, my needs first. That means I had to fill up my cup first, especially being a mom. If I get up and do all these things for my kids first, by the time I leave, I feel drained and exhausted. And I want to go right back bed. But if I am filling up my cup first and penning myself first, they feel that energy. Also, children are the closest thing to source. So they feel when you're in that high vibration, same as your twin flame. They are so in tune with you. It is a myth that your twin flame is not as awakened as you. They are so they're equally as awakened as you. So they are able to in tune with you and can tell when you are in this energy of really loving yourself and in a high vibration or when you're in the lower vibrations. And I find that when I'm in a lower vibration, my twin flame usually keeps a little bit of distance. Doesn't mean he won't communicate with me or he won't text back, nothing like that. But there is a little bit of space there and you can feel that inwardly. When I'm in a high vibration and I'm putting myself first and I'm doing my stuff and I'm not focused on my twin flame and I'm really feeling great, Every time my twin flame will text me just to see how I'm doing or what I'm up to. 
it's a miracle, <laughs> especially as a divine feminine. I was always the one initiating communication and that didn't really feel good. And so I had to refocus and put all of my attention on me and communicate with me. And as I did that, he mirrored back communicating with me and initiating conversation and checking in on me. That allows me to have, again, a healthy relationship instead of always trying to communicate with him and get something from him, which leads us to number five, twin flame obsession. This is why your divine masculine is setting a boundary and it looks like he's running is because he feels all of your energy on him. And that can feel really overwhelming or kind of claustrophobic a little bit if you think about it. If you think like you have someone that you really like and then all of a sudden they're texting you every day, calling you, want to know when they're going to see you next, sad that they didn't hear from you today or don't know when they're going to hear from you again. And it kind of just feels like, ooh, okay. Yeah, your twin flame <laughs> feels that and they will mirror that back to you. And so it's really important that you are allowing yourself to relax get into that space of just being, enjoying life, doing the things that feel absolutely juicy and loving to you, whether it's singing, dancing, painting, going out in nature, whatever it is that really allows you to live life to the fullest, live your life as if you already have your twin flame. Because if you were already in harmonious union with your twin flame, you would not be codependent on them because you are in a vibration of being in union with yourself. That's how you come into harmonious union with your twin flame is by being in harmonious union with God, the divine harmonious union with yourself. And then that is reflected back to you by being in harmonious union with your twin flame. You cannot come into harmonious union with your twin flame without coming into harmonious union with self. And that is the beauty of a twin flame relationship is they are helping you become your ultimate divine healthy self. They are here to love you unconditionally, adore you above anyone else, and they desire to be with you, but they desire to be with the healthy version of you, not the codependent, obsessive, not putting you first, uh, high standard value woman that you are, because then that's when you have what looks like a toxic relationship because they're mirroring back to you those toxic patterns that you continue to hold on that may have worked in soulmate relationships, but it will not work in a twin flame relationship. So the way to heal this is to be very honest with yourself in all of these places that I have directed and also using the mirror exercise in that space. I would also recommend checking out that blog that Twin Flames Universe did. I'll make sure that someone links it in the comments or someone in the video because it was such a juicy blog. Oh my goodness, it just put things together for me and really helped me get into a space where I had to really honor myself and become that woman that I really desire to be for my man, but also for myself and for my children and for those who are in my space, but really for me. So <laughs> don't forget how important you are, that you are so truly important and meant to come first. So check out that blog. Also check out twinflamesuniverse.com. There's free intro course there with eight juicy lessons to help you get on track in your twin flame union. Also check out the Ascension coaches because they're amazing. They're here to help and love you fully and help you move through any upsets in your twin flame union. But other than that, thank you for joining me. I hope that you guys have a blessed day and I will see you soon.